Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. You know what, Brian? I really don't even know where the camera's at right now. <laughs> it is so bright out here this morning. It actually feels really good because it's cold today. Uh, and, and, you know, we're out in the field talking about farming. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe the camera will pick us well, up. Well, you know, though, Darren, when it's a bright, sunny day like this, it's going to get warm. It's a great day to control winter annuals. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> well, I've that's focused true. out on our farm. We've had so many winter annuals because we do a lot of strip till. We've done some no till in the past. We've got these things showing up in the fall with an early harvest this year. We're going to have to do more to control those winter annuals. We're going to talk about the steps we'll take on our farm and things you can do on your farm to make that problem go away. Well, we're going to talk Talk about that strip till a little bit too, Brian. It was one of the best things that we did on our farm this year to get through the drought. Uh, maybe it'll be a really good thing for you next year. We'll talk about some of the benefits and some of the things you may consider for strip till this fall. Well, I know weed control was one of the key things to getting past the drought and kind of drought proofing your crop. If you don't have great weed control, you got a major problem out there, especially if you've got our weed of the week. We'll talk about it later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about fall manure application because, well, quite frankly, and I didn't tell him earlier, but Darren's standing in manure right now. So. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's not a surprise, Brian. You know, we did spread manure out in this field already, and you know, you think about it, well, we've got a lot of acres to get covered, and we had wheat on this field. It offers a great opportunity to get out a little bit earlier with manure. Yep, but here's the whole thing. If you're a farmer, we want you to hear this. If you're a non-farmer, we want you to hear this. You know, the old saying goes, and our dad used to tell us this when we grew up on a hog farm, and we had to do hog chores every morning and every night, he would say, oh, that manure, it's the smell of money. And I always <laughs> tell people, no, it's the smell of lost money. When you can smell manure, that means that your nutrients, to some degree, are going up in the air, and that's not what we want. Well, you know, when we were growing up, Brian, and, and we had hogs and we had cattle, and we were always dealing with manure, and we are getting it out to the fields and so forth, we didn't have a lot of choices. You know what? Uh, our only mechanism of containing that odor was to get out there, spread it, and then till it as fast as we could right. to try and get it underneath the soil uh, so those, those uh, ammonia smells wouldn't be coming up in the air, they'd be staying in the soil. Now yeah. we've got some products that we can use to try and control that. If you're smelling manure, a lot of times what you're going to be smelling is ammonia, and that's basically nitrogen that's going up in the air. So there are certain nutrients, yeah, you're probably not going to lose them if you spread them out on a field like this and just let them sit. But with nitrogen, it's one of the most important and most expensive nutrients for farmers. We don't want to lose that. I, I mean, certainly you can, but what does it do? Well, it loses money for you, meaning you have to spend more money on commercial fertilizer, commercial nitrogen to put down in your soil. And for the neighbors, uh, they don't really appreciate it. They don't want to smell manure. When we spread manure out on our field, we have one of two choices. Either we're going to till that in right away, or we're going to let it sit there for a while and smell and we don't want that. So that's why Darren talks about, well, there is something you can do if you just want to let it sit there. And the product we're starting to use now is called More Than Manure. Well, and when we think about More Than Manure, we're not just talking about the nitrogen brand, we're also talking about the phosphorus. You know, there's a lot of different things that are going to be in that manure. There's micronutrients, there's, uh, you know, of course, all the uh, microbial life that, that comes in manure as well. Uh, but the big things that we've got are nitrogen and phosphorus, and we're going to protect both of those. So we're not going to have that odor problem. Uh, I mean, sure, manure is not going to uh, completely go away from having any odor whatsoever, but if we can greatly reduce that odor and keep more of those nutrients available for next year's crop, that's good for everybody. That's a great return on investment when you can do that for you know, $15 to $20 an acre and control all that and hold that much more fertility in our ground. Uh, that's just a no-brainer for me. Now, we also work with a dairy near us and we take liquid manure and what we do there is directly inject that down into the ground. We don't spray it out over the top. We want to put that down into the ground. And where we like to put it is 10 to 12 inches deep. A lot of times it's only 6 inches deep to 8 inches deep when we're placing it. But in the past, we've gone 10 to 12 inches. I prefer that. In fact, I even prefer we've done some at 20 inches deep. And you might say, oh my goodness, we don't want to put it down that deep. How are we going to recover it? 
Well, you know what? I'll almost guarantee you, if you soil test every three inches in your ground all the way down to 24 inches deep, you'll find that the majority of your fertilizer is in the top three inches to six inches. So there's plenty of fertilizer probably already there for you. Get more fertilizer down in the ground. The other thing that happens when you put that fertilizer down 12, 20 inches deep, something like that, you don't run into any more phosphorus problems in your ground. Phosphorus becomes an issue in fields when we lose it to erosion. And so if you lay your phosphorus out on top of the ground, you lay your manure out on top of the ground, you build up the phosphorus on top of the ground. When erosion occurs, the phosphorus moves with that soil because phosphorus does not leach in soil like nitrogen does. So the key takeaways today, if you have manure to put on your farm, hey, that's the greatest fertilizer you're gonna get. It's awesome, there's so many good things you don't about it. it. You yep. just have to know how to handle it. The best thing you can do is get it underneath the soil so you aren't gonna have any issues with loss or odor. The other thing is there's some great treatments out there like more than manure. You can certainly use that. It's going to help you keep more of that fertilizer available for next year's crop. You should get a really good return on investment on that. We're doing some trials on our farm this fall that we'll share with you uh, as the season progresses next year. Now one thing with manure, Brian, is a lot of times when you're spreading it and you have all that fertility out there, you end up with a few more weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control this week's weed. Hey Brian, it's Farm Guy. What brings you to our farm? I watch Ag PhD every week and know that you guys do a lot of field testing. We test a lot of products here and when something works, we use it on our farm. Oh, like agriculture liquid fertilizers. Yeah. You guys started talking about ProGerminator and SureK on the show a few years ago. But I was skeptical. You're always skeptical. Should Brian be skeptical of agro liquid fertilizers? Find out at www.farmguytv.com. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Azar, singer, songwriter, and recording artist. My good friend Brad Swenson, owner of Swenson Investments and Commodities, has a great team that helps farmers and ranchers with farm estate plans. Our goal is to help you avoid or minimize federal estate tax. We work with you, your attorney, banker, and advisors. Preserve your wealth and pass the family farm down to the next generation. Call my good friends at Swenson Investments and Commodities. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier and less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Case IH set the standard for improving power and fuel economy with SCR technology. While others were still trying to decide what the standard was, only efficient power from Case IH is proven in the field 10,000 times over. And you'll find it in all our high horsepower equipment, from tractors to combines to sprayers. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. To learn more about how you can be ready with a proven leader, visit caseih.com slash efficient power. You know, Brian, one of the fun things about doing lots of different things on our farm is, well, one of them has to be the exact right <laughs> thing for the year. And this year, strip till was awesome in the drought. There's no question versus conventional till, strip till offered some huge advantages when it's dry. So one of the most commonly asked questions we get is, well, what do you guys do on your farm for tillage? And I just tell people everything. Okay, we do some conventional till, we do some strip till. Uh, we've done a lot of no-tilling in the past. We like strip till for certain reasons. It's got certain advantages. Now, I'm not going to say it's the best system of anything out there, but I'm just going to tell you, here are the advantages, here are the things we don't like. The, probably the number one thing that I don't like about it is it takes time. It's going to take more time in the fall. Well, like this fall, we've got ample time. It takes time. time in the fall. That's yep. that's really the downside, that you say, well, I've got all these acres to harvest, and I've got some fertility that I'd like to get, all these things. 
Well, you know what? Strip till, it's going to take you a little bit of time because you're building your seed bed for next year, you're doing your fertility for next year, you're doing all of that in one pass. So it's a really important job. Here's what we do. We'll plant our corn rows right here this year and then we're going to move over 15 inches and plant our soybean rows. The next year we're going back and we might plant corn or it might be continuous corn, whatever. The point is we split the rows all the time. So where we're planting this year in 2012 will be the same place we're going to plant in 2014. So 2011 and 2013 are set. So once you get into this system for a couple years, you've got your AB lines all set and all the guy has to do is hit the button in the tractor and that tractor just follows along. So if you have RTK guidance, it's not that tough, but you got to get that first year, get past that first couple of years so you get all those things set. One of the questions we get a lot with strip till is, well, where are you putting your fertilizer at exactly? And what fertilizer are you putting on? You've got to know your soils. I love putting nitrogen out in the fall. You just have to do it in moderation. You can't overload the soil. So we'll put some nitrogen on, but we're probably, well, actually in no field, we're going to put it all on. We want to do some split applying. That's fine. Nitrogen's one thing because nitrogen can leach away. P and K are going to stay where you put them, and this is one of the things that I think is a huge advantage of strip till. If we're putting our P and K down 8 to 10 inches deep in the soil, rather than broadcasting them over the top and then trying to till them in, well, how deep are you really tilling them in? Maybe you get them down 3 or 4 inches, you know, oh, okay, that's one thing. I'm going to put mine down 8 or 10 inches deep. And when you think about P and K, they're going to move in the soil, but it's very, very small amounts. Maybe they're going to move an eighth of an inch a year, a quarter of an inch a year. Well, if I'm dropping down eight to 10 inches deep, I'm just speeding this whole process up by about 40 years on my farm. I'm getting that fertility zone deeper in the soil. And on a year like this where it's dry, my roots are going down deep early in the year. They're getting all the fertility they want. And then when the top few inches of my soil start drying out, I'm still pulling in more fertility out of those roots that are down deeper where there's still some moisture in the soil. You're gonna be in great shape with all this stuff. So we really like strip till for all those reasons. And especially this year when we had drought, we didn't have to till all the ground. We just made one strip and we made it in the fall. So we had all spring to get some moisture into that strip. We like strip till also because at least in that strip, our ground is going to be pretty warm. Now it's not going to be quite as warm as conventional till, but it's going to be pretty warm, way warmer than no-till. We used to do a lot of no-tilling and we switched that to a lot of strip tilling. And this is the number one reason why, because now with that ground warmer in that strip, we get faster emergence, we get better emergence and better stands early in the year. One other thing with that is the residue management. And when you think about uh, managing residue, there are a couple different trains of thought here. One. One is, well, let's leave corn stalks tall so they're out of our way, and then we'll try and strip in between. We've tried that, and frankly, it really hasn't worked. Because, you know, there's going to be a few stalks that lay over, and all of a sudden you got this four-foot or six-foot chunk of residue that we just can't deal with. So we're using chopping corn heads now to chop that residue up as we're going through the field and size it. And we end up with five or six inch chunks out there that we can move around or pretty a easy in the field. Than that. A lot yeah. smaller than that. I mean, inch chunks to two inch chunks. And that's what I didn't like was the five or six inch chunks that we'd end up with with the standard corn head uh, cutting that stuff up or a standard chopper, I should say, behind the combine. We just really like the chopping corn head and we've had better success with our strip till and even when we've tried some no till. Anyway, with the strip till, the other big thing that we like here is just the fact that it's done in the fall. Okay, we don't like doing strip till in the spring. It, the ground is going to be at eight or ten inches deep. It's going to be too wet by the time you want to start planting. And so you have to get this done in the fall, at least in our operation with our soils. We do like shank machines better than uh, the machines with just coulters. You can strip till with coulters, but you don't get your fertilizers deep. We want our fertilizer deeper. That's the reason why we like the shanks. Well, once again, we do think strip till is a good practice. It's not necessarily the best, might not fit in your situation as well as it does for many others but it's something that's certainly growing around the country. The only real big drawback we see is it takes more time to get your fertilizer on, but it's, it's just got so many benefits that we think that outweighs it. And on our own farm, I will tell you that we dedicate somebody for two to three weeks in the fall to do strip tilling, and we're usually starting that as harvest is finishing up. Well, anytime you change your tillage program, it's gonna change your weed control. So we're gonna talk about this week's Weed of the Week and the best way to get it under control. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. 
Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quick Roots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quick Roots today. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature, and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. Everything is better to the power of Nutrisphere N. Nutrisphere N. Proven to shield against leaching, volatilization, and denitrification, Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager helps you maximize the efficiency of your nitrogen applications. In fact, research shows that in 184 corn trials, Nutrisphere N increases yields by an average of 13.2 bushels per acre. per acre. Do the math for yourself. Contact your local fertilizer dealer today and take your operation to the power of Nutrisphere N. Harvest season will soon be over, but don't put away your equipment until you bring it into Titan Machinery, your Case IH dealer. Take advantage of our Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance service designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short working season. Our technicians average more than 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive checklist to find problems before they slow you down. Call Titan Machinery today to schedule your Uptime service so you can spend the winter worry-free. Titan Machinery and Case IH. Better solutions. Winter annual weeds, how are you going to manage them in the fall, Darren? Well, how are you going to manage them in the spring? When we're talking about weeds that get a start in the fall, they're big already in the spring, they got a great big root system, you just can't control them effectively in the spring 100% of the time. But if you could take some of those weeds out right in the fall when they're small, when they're just getting started, it's so much easier. What happens a lot of times is we're busy with harvest, we're busy with pulling soil samples and getting fertilizer on and doing fall tillage and all these things are happening and you kind of forget about some of the winter annual weeds. Now I did mention fall tillage, if you're doing that, a lot of times that will take care of some of the winter annuals. You just have to do good aggressive tillage and not just kind of knock them over and then they keep coming back. With this year's drought, a lot of people are looking at doing less tillage to try to conserve moisture and if you're planning on that on your farm you might need to do some spraying yet this fall. Well one of the things that I think about Brian when we're talking about winter annual weeds if we're going out there in the fall you can use products that you really can't get away with using in the spring. For example let's say you're going to be planting soybeans in this field next year and we've got some winter annual weeds well you can use 2,4-D in the fall yep. safely and not have to worry about oh is that going to ding my soybeans when they pop up next year that 2,4-D is long gone. So a lot of guys, what they're doing is using some 2,4-D and also in combination using a residual herbicide to make sure, hey, if we have a great fall like we did last year, that they don't pop back up on me later. Yeah, on. but let's face it, most people aren't doing the residual herbicide thing. I'll just tell you on our own farm, going into corn, we've had a lot of issues with weeds like mare's tail, for example, and some other winter annuals. Oh, how about your favorite so, dandelion, yep, Brian? Yep, dandelion and a few others, some, some of the perennial weeds. And so what we have done is we've gone out with a full one quart of Banvil. I'm not talking one pint like a lot of people talk. I'm saying one quart. And you might say, oh my goodness, that's so expensive. Not anymore. Uh, a quart's going to cost you around 10 bucks. And I just figure, you know, with the price of corn today, I can't lose any corn to weeds. And I'm so sick of dealing with some of these stupid weeds that I'm going to go out there and I'm going to hammer them this fall. We did this last year on about 500 acres. And I'm telling you what, it was clean as a whistle this spring. It was so nice to get that stuff under control and go into a nice clean seed bed and not have to deal with some of these perennials and winter annuals. So we're going to do that again this fall. The other thing 
thing that we need to get under control is uh, the weeds coming in that are Roundup resistant. And some of those weeds are getting going in the fall and they're going to seed. And you know, I just don't like to see that stuff. And, and some of those weeds, we can put a residual herbicide out after harvest and still keep our fields clean. Yeah, but clean you talk about this residual herbicide thing, Darren, most people just are not gonna do that. But, but why, why not? You're going to put it on in the spring anyway. Yeah, let's here, talk, let's yeah, talk like the reason why. Here's, because Because most people are going to say, well, I'm going to lose too much of it over the winter. And you know, last winter, you might have lost some yeah, because it was so warm all Yeah, but boost your rate just winter. a little bit. Like Valor, for example, we a lot of times use two ounces in the spring. Many guys in our area now are going to two and a half ounces just because the pressure of weeds is so heavy. Why not just go three ounces in the fall? So what if you lose a third of it? You still got a full two ounces well, in you, the spring. Well, you can do that if you want to, but I think it's much more important to worry about, okay, I'm going to use a Sharpen, a Banville, a 240, something, and I am going to burn down and kill anything that's out there this fall. And it's especially important this fall because harvest came so early, we're going to have more weeds in October, let's say, than we, what we would normally have. So I think we got to be really aware of this. Well, regardless of your strategy, if you want to have a residual herbicide out or if you just want to burn those weeds down once and take your chances, you've got to go after those winter annual weeds now. Get them done in the fall and then in the springtime, you don't have to deal with these great big tough weeds. Well, our Weed of the Week could be a winter annual, it could be a summer annual. We're going to talk about it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Mandaco. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Our Weed of the Week is Roundup Ready and Liberty Link Canola. Well, you never know what you're going to have, Brent. When you've got some volunteer canola out there, chances are it's probably Roundup Ready canola or it's probably Liberty Link canola. You just don't know what it is. But the problem is, what if it's both? And now let me stack one other thing, Darren, on to this. Let's say it's also Clearfield. So oh, it's nice. Roundup Ready, Liberty Link, <laughs> Clearfield. Well, the reason why we're bringing this up today is you look at all these stacks that are coming in corn and soybeans and cotton, and pretty soon, uh, our plants are going to be resistant to almost every weed killer we have out there, then what are you going to do? So volunteer canola has been showing up in a lot of fields around the country. Uh, birds have brought them in. I mean, they've come in from combines, from tillage equipment. Who knows how they got in there in some cases. But how are you going to stop that volunteer canola? Well, it's tiny little seed brand, so it can certainly spread pretty easily. The, the big thing with volunteer canola is you've got to take two shots at this thing. You don't want to just go out there with one thing and then find out, oh no, it was resistant to whatever I used. Now you've got a big time problem. So you start with a pre. Now we look at broadleaf crops like soybeans, for example. Here's where it's a little difficult to control. So make sure you get a good pre-emerge herbicide out there. Uh, Valor does an excellent job on volunteer canola. Uh, also, Syncor is not too bad. Python, if it's not ALS resistant or Clearfield, uh, does a pretty nice job too. Uh, I, I would and lean authority. towards I would lean towards using a combination of two of those products to try and do a nice job. Then post emerge, hopefully it's not Clearfield tolerant because Pursuit and Raptor have been very effective on Roundup Ready canola or Liberty Link canola. Uh, now, if we're ALS tolerant, that's not going to work out so well for you. Then you may have to go with Flexstar. But the problem with Flexstar is it's not labeled as you get into the western part of the United States. So then you're left with Cobra. And the main thing, whatever you're using post-emerge, you've got to control that volunteer canola early. It's much easier to kill when it's two to four inches tall than when it's six to eight or even 12 inches tall. But the problem is a lot of people will go out and they'll just spray their Roundup or they'll just spray their Liberty and realize, uh-oh, I guess we didn't kill that canola. And by that time, it's big. So you've got to put something in real early. And when you do that, you're probably not going to have a lot of problem. Now, one other thing you could do, Darren, in soybeans would be Harmony GT. Yes, it's not great, but I mean, it does have some activity, at least if the uh, volunteer canola is not ALS tolerant. Okay, well in wheat, we don't have as much of a problem controlling volunteer canola because it's a broadleaf plant and we're talking about a grass crop. Uh, and if you use something with some buctrel in, uh, buctrel seems to do fairly well. A lot of guys like to have some 2,4-D in the mix and it does certainly help on canola control. I think it dings the wheat up a little bit, so I would alternate with husky. something else. I'd use husky. Husky's the best thing in wheat. When you turn to corn, the best thing in corn is going to be 
either Callisto, Laudis, or Impact. Status is pretty good too, but again, make sure you're controlling that volunteer canola when it's small. Well, that's all time we have for our Weed of the Week, but there's more Ag PhD to come after this. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The world of farming is changing. From the power and versatility of Steiger and Magnum tractors to the legendary reliability of axial flow combines, Case IH can help you be ready. To learn more, visit caseih.com forward slash be ready. We had a dry fall last year and we had some great big clumps out in fields. So this year, the focus is on keeping that clod size as small as possible and using a rolling basket on the back of your tillage tool may be one option. We'll show you a couple of different ways you can do it in today's Iron Talk. There are a lot of different designs for rolling baskets on the back of tillage tools. We chose to go with the round bar and I'll explain why. When we get into some ground that has some rocks, it seems like those flat bars are always bent up and out of shape and then not doing the kind of tillage work that you would like or the kind of breaking up clods and leveling out that seed bed. We get a firmer, nicer seed bed when we use the round bars versus flat bars. Uh, the one advantage that we're giving up switching to a round bar is those flat bars seem to tuck the residue under the soil just a little bit better than the round bars do. Uh, but the benefits of the round bar for us far outweigh it. The other thing is we've got some clay soils. They can get a little bit sticky at times. We're using a basket that doesn't have a center bar through the middle. It seems like that's a place where we always have uh, mud build up and, and then we end up with a great big mud ball rolling behind our tillage tool. So if you're looking at trying to reduce that clod size to keep them you know, relatively small this fall, consider putting a rolling basket on the end of your tillage tool. We like the round bars a little better than the flat bars, especially if you run into some rocky conditions. Uh, either way, I think it'll do a nice job for you preparing that seed bed for next year and keeping clod size small. That's it for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Why do more farmers choose Genuity VT Double Pro Rib Complete Corn Blend? For maximum yield protection. With two powerful ways to control above ground insects like corn earworm, corn borer, and fall armyworm. Plus convenient refuge in a bag with 95% traded seed and 5% refuge seed. That's simplicity. That's Genuity VT Double Pro Rib Complete Corn. The number one choice of farmers. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Case IH set the standard for improving power and fuel economy with SCR technology, while others were still trying to decide what the standard was. Only efficient power from Case IH is proven in the field 10,000 times over. And you'll find it in all our high horsepower equipment, from tractors to combines to sprayers. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. To learn more about how you can be ready with a proven leader, visit caseih.com slash efficient power. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. MicroLink, linking yield to potential. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. Introducing the all new Backsaver Swing Hopper Auger Mover. Backsavers have interchangeable parts which allows you easy access to move or swing your augers to fit your harvesting needs. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. What's so sweet about manure? Animals eating prairie grass and returning nutrients to the soil through manure is the way nature is intended to work. To learn more about manure, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.